We already had the 10 episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender and now it's Korra's turn. Get ready to know. According to the comments of critics and fans on the IMDb platform, which are the 10 best rated episodes of this series. This is Appa Comics. As in the previous tops, which if you did not see them I leave them in the final cards in a playlist, we will use IMDb and their ratings as a reference to determine which is the best. On the other hand, to make this video I watched again all the chapters I'm going to mention, so I don't miss any detail and tell you about the best and worst of each one. So do me a favor and leave me a like and hit subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Now let's get started. In the 10th place we have Skeletons in the Closet, where Korra and Mako find Tarlock prisoner, and he tells them the story of his childhood and how no attack would become a mon. The episode is simply epic. The story of two brothers doomed to conclude their father's revenge is not only epic, but very sad. By this point in the series, Tarlock was a second antagonist as was Zhao or Long Feng, but he ceases to be after learning that there is a much worse threat. And that is that the leader of the Equalist is his brother and he is a bloodbender. Speaking of bloodbending, it is also the first time that the possibility that with this ability they can snatch powers is explained, since until that moment the only assumption was that it was done through energy bending. The episode is a beauty in every way, and as I already mentioned, the story of the two brothers is a genius, especially for the sadness it conveys. With Noah talk gone, his hopes for revenge withered, and he passed away a few years later. After Noah attack leaves, Yakon is literally devastated and the twist, that the two are brothers is a gem because until that moment there was no way to think that there could be any relationship between the two. In ninth place we have The Last Stand, an episode that will probably divide the public as it did at the time it came out and to this day, and we have a lot to talk about it. We are told how the team infiltrated inside Kuvira's giant mecha. The sister Suin and Lin are in charge of deactivating the spirit cannon. Korra takes care of Kuvira, and the brothers try to exploit the robot's energy source. Finally, Kuvira uses the loose arm of the mecha to attack Korra, but when she gets out of control, the avatar saves her and a new spirit portal is created. Varric and Julie get married, and Korra and Asami go on vacation to the spirit world, not before almost kissing. This episode can be cute, ugly, sad, whatever you want, but there is a no way it will go unnoticed. Those who love it talk about it, and those who hate it talk about it. Well, partly because it is the last one that aired and ended the whole franchise, but more than that because of the chorus Sammy. But before we get to that, let's get to what happens before. To begin with, Korra redeems herself in her fight with Kavira, since previously the esteemed metal bender humiliated her by fighting. Mako and Bolin sacrifice themselves to blow up nuclear reactor. Nuclear. It's pronounced nuclear. Well, I don't know if it's the best plan in the world, but we give him extra points for his bravery. I'm gonna zap these vines with some electricity. Let's back it up, okay? I said that will make the vines explode. But I worked in a nuclear power plant for 10 years, and uh, I think I know how a proton accelerator worked. Well, please come down and show us. All right, I will. Kuvira cuts the robot's arm, and the cannon flies so they can't reach him. Korra and Kuvira's fight with liquid metal is good, although if I'm honest, I'll stick with the one they had before. Let's skip that with the explosion of the robot core, they should have all died and blew up half the city, something that in theory they were trying to avoid. And another plot convenience is that Kuvira goes halfway to a forest and just, just finds the cannon positioned just to hit the avatar in the face. That's a great plot convenience. That's just lazy writing. And Korra sacrificing herself to save her? In theory, they were trying to save the city. 
but they cause a gigantic spiritual explosion. But why with so much plot hole is in the ninth place of the best chapters of the whole series according to the critics? Because it has its epicness, and just like the rock plot convenience, or the lion turtle plot convenience that we saw in Aang. All this is forgiven if you give me an ending, I will not say beautiful, because I know that many people did not find the Korasami beautiful. But if you give me an unforgettable ending, I forgive you everything, and people, is there any way to forget this ending? When I saw it for the first time I was frozen, with a feeling of what? And that something causes sensations in people is what is worth in the end. I think that's the reason why it's in the top 10 despite having some flaws. Like it or not like it, whether they showed it or not, the Korasami left everyone like this. Enrolled in what? And the music with that melancholic tone that Korra has makes it very, very difficult to forget and very different from the end of many series. And let's not forget that the wedding of the best secondary character of the county was also a beauty. You may now do the thing. Oh. Shh, I'm trying to watch. In the eighth place, we have Day of the Colossus, where the team looks for all possible ways to stop the giant Kuvira robot. Among them, fill the visual of the robot with paint, try to make it fall, flying robots, an electromagnetic pulse, etc. The episode maintains the intensity during the 22 minutes that lasts, showing different plans. It gives a good magnitude of scale growth in the problems Korra and her team solve, and shows us the progress they are making, with three earthbenders erecting a building, Korra doing the best waterbending of her life, and airbenders who a few years after appearing work as a team like the best. They also show us the power that the giant mecha has literally cutting half the city, which is super powerful at Unavada level. I think the worst thing about this episode is its very weird CGI. It gives a pretty weird feeling both the Mecha and the Colibri's robots. But what they saved on special effects they spent on important details, such as bringing a Hiroshi Sato after a few years with a new design that shows us how bad he was having a hard time in prison, being in a fight with his daughter which is clearly reflected in how aged he is. It is also in this episode where we are shown his last moments, in a very strong scene. Now! Goodbye, son. I love you. I think this part, and that Varric proposes marriage to Julie are the best of the episode. As well as the action scenes that look amazing. Check this out. In seventh place, we have a gem of a chapter, and perhaps the favorite episode of many, Korra alone. Making constant changes of time, we are shown what became of the Avatar after her fight with the Red Lotus, showing us the external journey through the world as well as the internal one that Korra must make to reconnect with Rava, and at the same time relieve the torment she has in her head after her traumatic experiences. This episode is a gem, because you can feel how bad the protagonist is, and we are told in a masterful way how is the recovery process. The chapter emanates sadness, and it makes the viewer feel it, and that is mainly worth a place in this top 10, because imagine how difficult to achieve that is. The fact that they show it in a non-linear way gives us a clear example of the passage of time between one thing and another, something that sometimes failed in other seasons, where for example we had a scene where Mako and Asami meet and five minutes later they already love each other, but in reality some weeks passed in between and they did not manage to perceive each other well. It also makes it clear how bad Korra had it unlike Aang having three enemies too powerful and sadistic willing to do anything to reach their goal. The perfect closing of this episode is the appearance of Toph in a scene that to this day causes me a great hype to see her even though I already know that she is going to appear. I can't believe it. Toph? <laughs> nice to see you again, Twinkle Toes.
In sixth place, we go back to book one in Endgame episode, where after Tarlok's confession, Mako and Korra infiltrate a meeting of the Equalists where Amon is literally about to exterminate a nation, as he is about to take the powers away from the only airbenders in existence. The team confronts him and say publicly that he is a bloodbender, although practically no one believes them when they show that his face has a scar and he was attacked by a firebender. The episode tells us the conclusion of this story, and it does it in an amazing way in some aspects, more or less in others, but I'll talk about this in a little while. Now let's go with the cool stuff it has. The scene where Amon is looking for Mako and Korra is a literal horror from the music, the angles, and the suspense in effect is horror cinema. The one where he takes away the Avatar's powers is a nice twist. One expects the villain to get close enough to take away anyone's powers but the protagonist? On the other hand, practically everyone is made to shine at least for a moment. Mako electrocuting Amon, who even he himself is surprised. I'm impressed. No one has ever gotten the better of me like that. Poor, of course, with her scenes and especially with the ending, Tenzin saving his family, Bolin and Asami against Hiroshi, and even Iroh himself who had not yet shown much of his abilities shines. With this character I have a problem, and maybe it's the Spanish dubbing, but it never caused me the sensation of, man, how powerful General Iroh is. But if you watch the scenes the guy is standing on a plane shooting lightning, out of nowhere he uses his fire bending as a turbine without passing the Sozin Comet, and gets off three planes. He is a badass. Maybe the dubbing is what makes that, at least for me, this character never really caught my attention in the three or four times I saw The Legend of Korra. It's very different for example with Zhang Zhang. You see him for 20 minutes in the chapter The Deserter and you may not like him. You may think he's a hateful old man, but you know that the guy is very strong. Then you see him at the end and you say, indeed, the guy was strong, but with this guy it didn't happen to me. Continuing with the relationship conflicts that we are shown in Korra, we see the lousy father-daughter relationship of Hiroshi and Asami, and how the ideals of the Equalists and his commitment to them is so great that he is capable of hurting his own daughter. Something similar happens with the lieutenant who upon seeing that Amon is a bender, confronts him even knowing how powerful he is, mentioning that he dedicated his life to the cause. I think a small flaw is the quick defeat of Amon, with a Korra who lost her powers but to save Mako by the power of friendship and love makes air bending. And as in the episode of Kavira, the epicness of things is prioritized to the coherence that something like this is possible to happen. And it's not bad, eh? Because they do it wonderfully. The appearance of Aang out of nowhere just for the tear. And that in a second Korra who had no powers nor knew how to enter the Avatar state, rises and throws you the four elements, and above know how to recover the powers blocked by a bloodbender, does not make any sense. But men the hype that produces all this is another level. Sometimes they go a little overboard with these things very epic, but meaningless. But well anyway, however they do it comes out well. The best thing that has the episode is the scene of no attack and Tarlock going on a boat, It will be just like the good old days. Very strong that they spin this in a series for children and Nick, but what a genius scene. I would pay just to forget about this episode and feel the same as when I saw it for the first time. Anyway, a very good episode and an interesting ending against a villain practically impossible to beat 1v1. The fifth place of this top is occupied by the episode beginnings where Korra, after being attacked by a dark spirit, becomes unconscious and loses her memory. She is found by a group of fire sages who help her reconnect with her avatar essence, having visions of her past lives, one tells her story. To start with the good things, the story of a new avatar is always welcome, and even more so if it is the first one since up to that moment we had no idea what his origin was. Another great point of this episode is the change in the animation style, with softer and watercolor landscapes, a change in how each of the elements are seen, 
even the turtle lions, which makes everything look more ancient and feels like part of a legend read in a book. Something that is very noticeable is the different new spirits that we see here, which personally at the time seemed to me quite Pokemon-esque, but today they do not bother me at all and are clearly very inspired by Studio Ghibli films as many things in the series. Among some of the bad reviews that this episode receives on IMDb is that by introducing us to Rava and Vatu, representation of something similar to the devil and God, it contradicts the Buddhist influence in the series. I think it is a great chapter and comes to save a part of this book that was somewhat tedious or boring so it sits as a great relief and gives rise to the entire second part of this season with the concepts of Rava and Vatu and harmonic convergence. P.S. Did you notice that they reworked Kurok and Korra? They made it a little bit worse. In the fourth place of this ranking, we have the ultimatum. As Ba Sing Se descends into chaos, Mako and Bolin commandeer an airship and set course for the Si Wong Desert to find Korra and Asami. The brothers save their family from the chaos caused by the queen's death. They finally locate Korra and contact Tenzin, but it is too late. The episode is quite quiet and let's say, regular, in its first part, but from 10 minutes we have two small interesting stories. The first is Korra meeting with Iroh and the second and the one that for me, positions it in this table is the arrival of the Red Lotus to the Northern Air Temple. The last eight minutes of the chapter are a real jewel with very strong moments of action and tension. The team of villains arrives and we are divided into four parts. On the one hand Pili from an airship acts as a sniper to prevent the rest of the airbenders escape from the temple. On the other hand Bumi fights against Gazam and Kaya against Minghua and obviously Tenzin against Zaheer. Each of these fights and scenes is a beauty especially Tenzin's which without a doubt has to be the best airbender fight of the entire franchise. Just as it happens with The Tales of Ba Zing Se, this episode is positioned among the best rated by the public, only for a part of the chapter that has such a strong intensity that makes up for the moments of calm we have, but in the following post, this calm does not exist. Let go your earthly tether, enter the void, empty and become wind, empty and become wind. In position three, we have enter the void, where once the Northern Air Temple was taken over by the Red Lotus, Korra decides to surrender so that the airbenders are not eliminated. In doing so, they are tricked and a new fight begins, ending with the death of P. Lee and the awakening of Zaheer's ability to weightlessness. From minute one, we are shown the tension in the characters planning how they can have an advantage to save the airbenders. On the other hand, the scenes of Zaheer meditating and reciting the words of Guru Lagima give it a touch of mysticism that is crazy. The moment when Minghua is using waterbending to create these airbender dummies, man, what an incredible scene. From that moment on, the fights are divided in three, on one side Pili with the metal benders, on the other side Minghua and Gazam against Bolin Mako and Asami, on the other side Korra and her father against Zaheer, each one more epic than the other, totally intense, fast, and with an animation that is a bestiality. Bolin saves the day strongly because if he wasn't there, Tenzin Mako and Asami had no escape. On the other hand, Tonrak seems to die, but is saved by Kavira, who will be the antagonist of the next book. The death of P. Lee is impeccable and I think it is a tin that Korra does not enter an avatar state and destroy everything because she could have done it. Well, in the ending, people the ending, Zaheer losing P. Lee and using weightlessness, what a tremendously epic moment. Impossible to forget and definitely well deserved its place in this ranking. Maybe if it were up to me I would put it in position 1, but according to IMDB this is not so. In the second place of this ranking, we have the episode beginnings part two, in which Wan's vision shows Korra how the process to merge with Rava went and how she became the first avatar. Her story inspires Korra to know what she must do to restore the balance between the physical and spiritual worlds. If the first one left many of us excited to know the story of the first avatar, this second part is much better. 
one finds that there are other lion turtles who teach their inhabitants other abilities. After seeing the chaos that Vatu begins to cause and learning that the harmonic convergence is near, one travels the world and merges with Rava to end in an epic, very epic fight in the spirit world. This final fight is a picture, the colors and background drawings that look quite simple contrast with the characters, which gives beautiful images. Seeing the different effects in the bending is beautiful, literally a work of art. This two-part episode has been considered for many of the audience as the point of no return. When watching the series, besides being considered as fundamental for any fan or non-fan of the franchise as it works independently, as a mini-movie, OVA, or whatever you want to call it, which explains the origins, not only of the Avatar, but the bending, the lion turtles, and the spirit world. But there is an episode that shocked even more people, critics and viewers, and that's our post one. The best episode of The Legend of Korra considered by critics and fans is Venom of the Red Lotus, where Korra is given a metallic poison that induces the Avatar state with the aim of eliminating it to cut the cycle. The episode is quite dark. They are literally about to murder a teenage girl by poisoning her, quite strong. While she is poisoned, we have some of the best scenes of the whole series. Having a series of illusions with the previous traumas she has from her previous fights. The world doesn't need you anymore. The time of the Avatar is over, Korra. <sighs> The sequences are magnificently epic, and as I mentioned several times, it looks like horror movies. When Korra goes into Avatar state and goes into wild mode, it's also genius. Keeping the formula that worked in Avatar The Last Airbender, while Korra fights with Zaheer, two important fights are happening, Mako against Minghua and Gazam against Bolin, all excellently animated, especially the one between Korra and Zaheer, using again his choking technique with the Avatar, Yes, I have to admit I never loved that the main villain of Red Lotus is defeated with a swirl created by airbenders, and of course less the part of the sock in the mouth. Other than that, everything is genius, but what really is the best part, and cherry on the cake in this episode is the ending which as I mentioned several times already, could have been the best ending for the whole series. Korra in a wheelchair, and in very bad shape. And finally, Jinora who surprised throughout the season 2 and 3 with new skills and getting her batteries at 100%, receiving her tattoos with a beautiful music and an air-bending show. In the most bittersweet ending you can have in your life, with a beauty of emotional moment and a totally destroyed Korra shedding a tear and breaking your heart. Comments on IMDb describe it as, no other animated series will match this, the ending guaranteed to leave you speechless. The fight sequences of these last two episodes are the best of the entire series including Avatar The Last Airbender, an unprecedented ending among many other positive opinions give it a 9.6 score. Still below the Sozin's Comet Part 4, but certainly being a beauty of an episode and ending. Just like the best moments of Avatar The Last Airbender, in Korra we find moments impossible to surpass impossible to forget, and with an animation that has no comparison. So if you still haven't done it, I invite you to give a chance to this series that has two epic moments. Now I would like to know your opinion about this top. Would you change anything? Would you put any episode that I didn't mention in this top? Leave it in the comments. We'll see you next week with more videos like this one. Please if you like it don't forget to leave your like and subscribe to support the channel and I leave you in the cards the playlist with the other episode tops of the channel. Bye.